Well, you've probably never used a shovel to harvest radishes before. And if you're wondering what this strange looking thing is, it actually looks like an overgrown radish and, and that's pretty much what it is. Actually, it's called a Chinese radish or daikon is a common name for it. And uh, these are, a, again, an oriental vegetable that are uh, actually grown in, in cooler parts of the climate. So really, if you'll just think about radishes, you can plant them about the same time in a spring crop, usually around February, March, which is when we planted these, or again in the fall. Now let me show you, most of the ones that are harvested commercially, they like for them to get up to about 20 pounds. This one, if you look at the scale, only weighs about two pounds. You can imagine a 20 pound radish. In Oklahoma conditions, though, it gets too hot too quick, so forced to get them up to about 20 pounds, part of the problem would be they become a little bit too more pungent. So we like to harvest them about this size, a little bit smaller. And it's important to use a shovel because sometimes they get so deep that you can break them off, as you'll notice there. So obviously, culturally, they need well-drained soil, loose you know, soil that's pretty sandy so they can get those big tap roots on them. Now when you plant them, you want to put them a little bit further apart, say like four to six inches, which is a little bit different from the traditional radish, but again you can see that they're not real easy to pull out of there on the size of them and then we just wash them off. This particular cultivar is called spring leader of the Chinese radish or daikon. You can also find some with a rosy pink color and they're going to get the same problems at radishes. You'll see some flea beetle hole damage and also harlequin bugs this year have been a big problem on the radishes and that's the true bug that has piercing mouth parts and it's kind of got oh diamond shape on it, yellow and black color and again so it can pierce the foliage and we've just really pretty much tolerate them but there's some organic sprays and some other common pesticides that you can use to prevent them or control them if you need to. Now this is obviously not a very common vegetable, likes cooler temperatures again, and I'm not really sure how to store it or even prepare it. I know that in just sampling it a little bit, it's, it's already pretty stout, and, and most of the literature I've read says not to really eat them raw. So we're going to go to our reliable extension food specialist, Barb Brown, and hopefully Barb can tell us what to do with this most unique vegetable. Daikon is a mystery to a lot of us in the United States, but in the East, the Far East, it's one of the most common foods. It's eaten in a lot of different meals in a lot of different ways, from fresh shredded to chunks to cubes to braised and stir-fried, and almost anything you can think of doing, they have done with it and done very well. What we're going to do today is a sautéed daikon. I'm going to put about a tablespoon of vegetable oil in a pan here, and turn the heat on a little bit, and then put about three-fourths of a pound of sliced daikon. Now daikon often comes in the same shape that carrots do in that it tapers toward the end. So you get a lot of different sizes and you're just going to have to work with it a little bit in order to, to saute it. You can do some slicing and cutting some in half. But notice you get anything from a two to three and a half inch diameter daikon down to some of the littler ones that actually do look very, very similar to a carrot. Now at this time of year, if you would harvest them, uh, they probably will be very hot and they won't have a very strong flavor. In the fall and winter, however, when the weather is cooler, the flavor is very sweet, uh, sort of like a sweet turnip. They are often used, as I said, uh, in, in many different ways, but one of the things that they don't do very well is store very long. So you need to use them probably within about two days if you're going to use them fresh. If you're going to keep them longer than that, you can, but you'll need to probably cook with them. They'll uh, keep in, in the refrigerator for probably about a week if you're going to be cooking with them. Now one of the things that you need to do when you harvest is remove the leaves. The leaves, in, in, if they're bright green, can be used. They're an edible product, but they all, if you're going to store them, they pull the moisture and the, the food out of the plant itself and make it flabby. So during storage, you don't want to have those on there. These cook very, very quickly. For this type of, of size of daikon, it will only take about three to five minutes to cook. Shredded daikon take three to five minutes. You can add cubes of daikon to stew uh, later on in the cooking, but don't leave them in there any longer than probably 10 minutes. You can also take shredded daikon or julienne daikon and add it to something like a chicken broth or a meat broth during the last few minutes of cooking. You want to just cook it so it's tender crisp, otherwise it gets mushy and it loses its, its quality for you. 
Another thing that you can do is make salad out of it. This is one of the things that's very commonly done, using it on a crudite platter or as a salad itself. Um, this particular one is just orange slices and daikon coins. It's got a bit of lemon juice or a vinaigrette over the top of it. One of the traditional things would be to put a sesame oil and sesame seeds over the top of it and serve it in as such. Once the daikon has gotten a little bit soft, what we're going to do is add about a teaspoon, let me double check, half a teaspoon of sugar and about a pinch of salt to this. and about a tablespoon of minced parsley and two teaspoons of either chives or green onion tops or fresh dill if you have that. Put it into a serving bowl and this will be ready to go. It may be a mystery now, but I think after you've tried it a few times, you're going to find that it's well worth exploring. For Oklahoma Gardening, this is Barbara Brown.